You can listen to The Professional List wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 14th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're taking our giant Bloomberg podcast check and buying McClatchy. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. So apparently Mike Bloomberg reached out to the Muller She Wrote podcast. Yes. Uh, to buy some advertising time. Yes. They never called us. We're going to no. full disclosure. No. Uh, you know, we don't sell ads, so I guess that's why. Um, they, I'll bet Mike Bloomberg like bought the Blue Apron advertising list or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, know, there's a there are people out there with much, much, much bigger, more complex, more cross referenced and cross tab lists than you and I could could dream of in our philosophy. And staff. Yeah, and staff. In, in fact, can I tell you a funny story? Yeah. True story. Uh, last week I was phone banking. Uh, for Betsy Dirksen Londergren. Uh huh. Big old barn of a room. It's uh, down on downtown. And uh, there were five, six people in there. Three people working the phones. I was one of them. One was doing outgoing calls to people who volunteered last time. One was a volunteer who looked for coaching. And everyone was stuffing envelopes. There's just nobody there. Mm-hmm. And we got, I believe, one incoming phone call. And it was from it was from the Bloomberg people. Looking to hire staff. Wow. Now, in I, Springfield. In Springfield. So, this, yeah. mind you, this is, I, I'm working at a local uh, congressional candidate's office. So, of course, she's all set up and ready to go, who ran last time. Right. Um, and she has really good people who worked for her last time yeah. and are just totally on board, like you. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. you're not a paid staffer. But no, 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 no. I'm not a paid staffer. There's anybody. a core of volunteers yeah. that are working for Betsy that, you know, will will be there We'll follow her to the end of the earth. And right, I, I right. passed when I ran into her mom yesterday. Oh, gosh. You <laughs> I, know, I that's passed, why we have to volunteer for Betsy, because her mom will kill us. We don't. Well, I, I passed <laughs> along my suggestions about how to do uh, door-to-door canvassing a little more efficiently, deploying uh-huh. your limited resources a little better. Um, she said, don't worry. I'll pass them along. Um, <laughs> she's very, I, they they kind of ran. It was amateur hour last time. They, they tried really hard. They had good staff. They were very enthusiastic, but they had never done this before. Mm-hmm. Um, but the idea that already in Springfield, Illinois, which isn't on anybody's map, there's already a paid Bloomberg field office with staff calling around to people who are already doing politics to see if mm-hmm. anybody wants to come over and make money. And that is the story is that's going to be the story of this election, at least for the next several months. Yeah. Because nobody has ever seen anyone spend the kind of money. Mike Bloomberg is spending to to win the nomination, right? And so there's right. no model. And there's for something it. fundamentally undemocratic about oh, yeah. this, and that's oh, yeah, the problem. Uh, I do have advice for Mike Bloomberg: free advice. <laughs> you never give a billionaire free anything. I'm giving it away, <laughs> Mike Bloomberg. This will be ten thousand dollars. Yeah, actually, I think it's worth ten thousand dollars to oh, Mike easily. Bloomberg. Easily. Uh, my advice to him is that when people get mad at him about you did this as mayor, you know, you said this thing about redlining, you said this thing about stop and frisk and you're making, Oh, excuse me. Hold on just a minute. My earbud just fell out. Oh. Hold on. Okay. You said these things about stop and frisk, all these things you did as mayor, there's all these embarrassing tapes of you. None of which we think are okay. At all. No, no, not at all. No. But that's the point. My my answer to anything that I did as mayor and anything that comes up from my past would be, what do you expect? I was a Republican. Yeah. And now here's the important part. Mm-hmm. I was a Republican. I was a part of Team Evil. Mm-hmm. And now I am atoning. You and I talk about this a lot on the podcast, that the price of admission is atonement. Yes. I am atoning for being a Republican, for being a part of Team Evil, Mm -hmm. by by committing myself, my time, and my money 
to electing Democrats across the board? Yes, that's the right answer. And that's the right answer. And then if anything else comes up, it's like, yes, I was a Republican. Mm -hmm. I was part of Team Evil, and now I am atoning for that. Mm -hmm. And that's the only answer I think he needs to have. That's the only answer uh, that's viable. Every other yeah, answer sounds right. weak and stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, stop and frisk is racist. Yeah, yeah. I was a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was. That's the answer, and, right? And it, and he should never carry the this other message that I want someone to mention, because oh. you know me. Uh, but some staffer out there should be ready to say if if pushed, like. Didn't I just see you palling around with Bill Crystal and and Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes is on your on your broadcast network, right? Is he's now mm -hmm. these are all former Republicans who came to Jesus five fucking minutes ago when the wind shifted. I don't hear you I don't hear you casting them out. I don't I don't see them being denied a place on the Washington Post op ed page or the New York Times op ed page or MSNBC panels, or meet the press. So, And isn't Rick Wilson still hiding how he votes? Oh, yeah. No, he has said many, so... many times <laughs> that he promises next time, first it was going to be, uh, I'll do it on the air. Then it was going to be uh, in an essay that I am having published. Then it was going to be in my book. Then it was going to be in, my, in, the, in the addenda to my paperback. And, you know, because I hold grudges like an Irishman, um, uh, I remember all this shit. I remember mm -hmm. how absolutely weaselly he has been about because there's there's no way to verify that he believes anything he says other than who are you working for now and what was your voting record in the last election and the only thing he would say is well I didn't vote straight party oh so you did you voted for republicans you just didn't vote for fucking trump right i mean or whatever but he he is even though he promised his very dear friend uh, Anna Marie Cox repeatedly on her podcast that he would deliver this one factual thing he just won't do it because it makes him look like a hypocrite. I mean, why else would he, why else would he be cagey about it? But it doesn't matter. I mean, what you and I think about this doesn't matter. What is important is all the people who've said, no, the never Trumpers are our friends. Now, any ally, any port in a storm, anybody's cool with us, um, need to check themselves when they start coming for Mike Bloomberg, I'm coming for Mike Bloomberg. I do not want Mike Bloomberg as the nominee of my party. I really don't. Um, if he is the nominee for my party, I will vote for him and I will knock doors for him because he is so much better than Donald Trump. But right now, he is not my choice. However, my party has a long and um, pretty much unbroken record of not caring about what I say about anything. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter what I think. Um, so I, you know, I, I knock doors and campaigned and worked hard, as did you, for the last Democratic nominee who lost. And who was not a perfect candidate, but was a wonderful candidate and was a million trillion times better than Donald Trump. Right. So I am I'm kind of in, I'm kind of moving in the direction of becoming an asshole, honey. <laughs> I, I'm kind of I'm kind of tired of being the grown up who says, now let's everybody get along. Let's all agree that, you know, whatever our differences are, we can put them aside. You know, let's not let. Bill Crystal run the fucking campaigns, okay? Uh -huh. if he yeah. to, if he oh no, you to, were you were uh, not sugarcoating how no. you felt about certain Republicans no. deciding that that they're going to tell the Democratic Party who to no. nominate. And and bless his heart, brother Charlie Pierce picked up one of my posts this week, and he did. And he he leaped to you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an Esquire magazine. Look at me. So uh, I guess you the, are getting listened to by I, somebody. Well, yeah, I have I have little ports of entry for. My, my subversive opinions. I, don't, I would not turn down their money or their votes or their uh, the ones who say, I'm voting, you know, Nicole Wallace, I'm, whoever you nominate, whoever right. you nominate, I'm there for them. That's great. They're not tr stepping into the middle of my primary, my party, yeah. and telling my party what they need to do to earn their, their votes. That's bullshit. You fucked up your party. If you'd like to go to Bethesda or Walter Reed, and and clean out the bedpan bed yes. of all the all the all the uh, people who were injured in the wars that you helped lie us into, Bill Crystal. Do that for ten years and come back, and maybe I'll entertain your 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 parole hearing to come back <laughs> to civil society. But you see, that's not up to me. That is right. not my decision. It never has been. I I am kind of tired of being the person who tries to get. Um, the extremists, the people who are bomb throwing to, to, to play nice. Mm -hmm. I would like to say, no, I'm not voting for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders does not support my 
my plank of a $75 an hour minimum wage. Therefore, <laughs> he is not pure enough for me. So fuck you all. And fuck you corporate <laughs> stooges who, who go along with Bernie Sanders and his progressive <laughs> ideas. Fuck you. Because that apparently is the road to riches. You can you can get a million. That's how you get a blue check mark on Twitter. Yeah, I will have a blue check mark on Twitter by, by June. Yeah. We will have we will have a hundred thousand listeners, Blue Gal, if we just <laughs> embrace the idea that we're going to outvote Trap House, Chapo Trap House, <laughs> and and it's easy because you don't really have to be sincere. You don't have to have much of an opinion. Just pick the furthest left opinion you can find and say "fuck you, you corporatist oligarch shill," and then jump <laughs> way the fuck out into space with some other opinion and demand everyone follow you because that's what people are doing. They're they're holding the nomination process hostage. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. If you. Unless you give me everything I ask for, you you corporate shills. We'll just bomb this thing out and we'll, we'll, well be back in four years. This brings me to the topic that I want to talk about, yes. which is New Hampshire. Yes. And there's a very good op ed in the Washington Post this week about yeah. uh Elizabeth Warren not doing well in New Hampshire. In fact, shockingly so. She got yep. zero delegates. Yep. And uh they talked about her voters being at the top of the spectrum of I will vote for anybody. Yeah. I will I will abandon Elizabeth Warren and I will vote for any Democrat who can beat Donald Trump. Yes. She is her her followers, her supporters are number one in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh the most of them have said that they would do that. Now and that may be why she did not do as well as yeah. expected in New Hampshire is okay. that people decided, no, I'm going to vote for someone who I think will win, not for my heart, right? Or the person that I really care about. And that was the point of this op-ed was, you know, people who like her are tremendously sincere and care about children, but they're willing to abandon their candidate very easily in order to defeat Donald Trump. Right. They have a higher purpose. And that's sort of not helping her, you oh. know, get get votes. Um, but I am pleased to see how many uh, people are pointing out that these two very white states do not represent the Democratic Party mm-hmm. uh, and that it's we need to just go forward with uh, the candidates we have and continue to go through this process. The people that that you're talking about who are the assholes yes. or, or that you are claiming to join in I, no, no. your... <laughs> no, no, I will, I'm learning from them. I'm going to exceed their business model and become more successful than they are. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to the logical extreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, are overwhelming, very... Those people are overwhelmingly male. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm going to be a very, very young Turk. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the youngest Turk. I'm the youngest Turk. <laughs> I'm the turkiest of all the Turks. That's it. Turkiest of all the Turks. I'm I'm perfectly aware where that expression comes from and and the tragedy behind it. So don't don't at me for mocking uh, something that should never be mocked. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're overwhelmingly male. Mm -hmm. And it is – this is why I block people who say I will not vote for so-and-so. Yeah. I will will only vote for my candidate and you need to join us or – face defeat because that is bullying right. and that is abuse and it feels very familiar to those of us who have been through verbal abuse mm-hmm. so no we're not going through that again well uh, all i can say is my wife has told me on occasion that i am overwhelmingly male as well so <laughs> in, in a good way in a good way happy I'm valentine's saying. day <laughs> happy valentine's day baby also happy yeah. valentine's day do a shout out to senator bernie sanders in all sincerity who this Uh week said and i'm I'm, let me be very clear anyone making personal attacks against anybody else in my name is not part of our movement we don't want them that's what senator bernie sanders said so if you are out there if you encounter someone who is going after a candidate or a block of voters or anybody else in a very personal way you know call uh, attacking their character and calling them mm-hmm. sellouts, whatever it is, not policy-based, which we can all disagree on and, and spend the rest of our lives debating, which would be great. But mm-hmm. if you see someone out there going after someone personally, in, and remember, they're not doing it in Bernie Sanders' name because he said so, and you are therefore free to assume that they are trolls or saboteurs, which they obviously are. Or bots. And, or bots. Or and Russians. Treat them as right. Such. 
Go right. ahead because Senator Sanders now says go ahead and treat them like trolls or bots or saboteurs because they're nothing to do with me. So they're not part of my movement, he good said. For him. Yeah. Yes, he said movement. So right. good for him. And you can throw that back in their faces. Absolutely. Uh so um oh I I talked with a colleague of mine this week who uh said that they were going to vote for Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. And uh but they also said about Bernie, they said, look, about those online trolls, those online trolls may be the best weapon on Facebook against Donald Trump. Could be. And I thought, oh, you know, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if they would turn their ire to Trump supporters and Trump bots and have a bot war one against the other instead of trying to divide the Democratic Party based on purity, uh, that would be a good thing. Um. All right. So where do you want to start with the whole no justice department, no peace yeah. situation? <laughs> well, the um, big news of the week, let's, in let's my finish. opinion. Oh, that's huge. Let's finish off the, the Bloomberg news just to sort of make it clear to everyone that. If and you, the McClatchy news, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, the New York Times is actually reporting that Mike Bloomberg is paying uh, 23 year old field organizers six thousand dollars a month. Uh, his rallies have free food and swag. He's spending just as extravagantly on field work as on television. And no one, this is very important to remember, no one has ever spent anything like this at this level before. There's no mm -hmm. model for this. There's no predicting this. If someone spent incrementally more, uh, if, if someone were, you know, buying up a ton of TV ads, that happens all the time. It's, you know, mm -hmm. sh yeah. shouting at each other. No one has ever spent money to build an entire massive campaign infrastructure overnight with cash uh barack obama built it um and then decommissioned it which right. is one of the dumbest things he ever did after he he won in 2008 um uh, obama for america should have been the m mighty organizing tool of of the next eight years they should have been everywhere they should have been in neighborhoods they should have been registering voters and some of them did that but mm -hmm. the idea that we he just said okay we're done now and tried to govern without protecting his flank was just rank foolishness. Um, so uh, Mike Bloomberg is spending money like nobody's ever seen before. And, and, and I have no idea how it's going to affect things. I do know. Well, that we do have, we have faced this kind of choice in Illinois though. Oh yeah. 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 You know, with, with JB Pritzker. And I, I do not believe as I did about JB Pritzker Mm -hmm. that uh, Mike Bloomberg will sign on the dotted line on a lot of progressive yeah, uh, no. priorities. You know, I really did feel I voted for J.B. Pritzker for governor. I did, too. Because he talked the talk. He had a black woman as an as his lieutenant governor who also walked the talk mm -hmm. and, and had, uh, you know, a reputation as someone who walked the talk and was sincere about it. And I think that there is uh he made a commitment to unions he made a commitment to the budget process he made a commitment to a lot of things that progressives could say okay you yeah. know we're going to we know that we can't beat Bruce Rauner who's also a billionaire without some structural money coming in right and so unfortunately we have to elect we have to nominate a billionaire in order to beat a billionaire and that's what people are saying you know although of course the joke is Wait, who's the other one? Because <laughs> Trump is Tom not a billionaire. Right. Steyer. The yeah. other one is Tom Steyer, not not Donald Trump. So uh, and and that is a thought going forward with some primary voters saying, look, if it, if Bloomberg is the one that can beat Trump, OK. Yeah. But uh, progressives have to think, I think, a little less in terms of nine level chess yeah. and stick to our principles I'll, you know, I understand we want to beat Trump. Of course, we want to beat Trump. That's assumed. Mm -hmm. But this is a nomination process. And I I am going to vote for someone in the primaries who meets my values. Right, exactly. And I am Absolutely. not convinced that Michael Bloomberg does that. So no, he doesn't. Uh, that I'm not saying beat Trump comes second in any regard, but. I think the polls say any one of these Democrats can beat Trump right yes, now. So absolutely. I don't think I have to do nine level chess in order to uh, choose a winner. No, you know, I don't think I have to do that. But there, there is a limited pool of, of campaign expertise mm 
mm-hmm. um, of people who know how to run organizations like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are, you know, there are a handful of podcast and podcast networks and influencers. Uh, we're on the low end of that spectrum, but we exist on it, who influence people who mm-hmm. talk and converse with people and have some some say over the conversation, some incremental say. And and Mike Bloomberg is willing to spend, and this is the quote from uh, Mueller, she wrote, people, $70 million on mm-hmm. podcasts and influencers. That's a <laughs> shitload of money. That's that is a shitload ins- of money. That is, an, that is an insane amount of money. That is more money than you and I will see in seven in our years. combined lifetimes. Yeah. Yep. And, and that is, he's willing to drop that. It's like dropping it on you know, leaflet hand routers, you know, it's just like, you're going to spend every corner of a campaign, everything you can do down to the people who are just standing on the street corner shouting, which is basically what we do. I'm going to bankroll and buy them. And, and one of the things you do when you do that is you just buy up the market of expertise. There's no one to hire. Well, and that is, that is to be credited to Mike Bloomberg Yes, is that he's buying quality, not just quantity. He's not just buying up, huge swaths of airtime minutes in terms of 60 right. second ads and putting up crap. His ads are stupendous. Yeah. I don't yeah. sugarcoat that. I don't, I don't deny that at all. No. His ads are stupendous people and they are anti-Trump and they're going for the jugular and they're pro science and they're going for the jugular. And that is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, he's not just spending money on, oh, look, I have all this money. I can flush it down the toilet, buying up ad space everywhere and put up crap. He's putting up good stuff. And, and, and the point I was, uh, one of the points I was trying to make was a, that he is, he's simply sucking all the oxygen out of the room, all the expertise out of the room. But B, you know, we have complained, every liberal I know has complained since, you know, the nineties or the, or certainly Mm -hmm. since the rise of right wing talk radio and Fox news that there is no liberal media. Right. Which isn't. And and the, the right keeps beating us just because they have their own goddamn television network and they have mm-hmm. their own radio network. And they're willing to spend the patient capital of fascism is willing to spend money over decades to build a giant media machine that can crush little alternate voices like ours. Mm-hmm. And Mike Bloomberg just standing to one side, it's like, oh, that's what money can do. Oh, I see. Money can money can actually build a siege engine big enough to smash that down at least temporarily. Right. And it is a lesson. I mean, I don't need to learn this lesson. You certainly don't, but it is a lesson that maybe people who are looking down their nose at billionaires and, and the corruption of the process, fine, great. You don't want the process polluted with one guy coming in and dropping, you know, bunker busters full of money. Great. Why don't you pool your money and collectively spend it over the course of the next 10 years building an actual liberal media infrastructure? This, this, mind if I tell one little story? Again, sure. Sure. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, when I was at the city council in the city of Chicago, watching the fight over Walmart. Oh, yeah. And the fight yeah. over Walmart was, um, uh, there were a whole bunch of political things, which are hilarious. And an alderman who didn't understand the, the rules, which were hilarious. And that all happened in public. But uh, there was a, a proposal to put a Walmart in a poor neighborhood. And all of these good government people came out of the woodwork and they're lovely people like, oh, my God, Walmart, they're destructive. They wipe out mom and pops off. You know, all the things that Walmart is is justifiably criticized for. Right. And, and the people in the neighborhood said, look, fuckers, we've had a food desert here. We've had no shopping. We have no nothing for 40 years. Where right. the hell have you been? And Walmart's been, hiring. Yeah, Walmart's you know, hiring. That's the thing, bringing, too. Yes, bringing right. jobs and fresh food within walking distance of our homes. And you, all you people ever do is talk. You never actually deliver. No one ever actually built a grocery store near my house with fresh food that's affordable. Right. I hired my kid. They're right. doing that. So I don't care about your good government instincts. I don't give a shit that Walmart is, is an evil corporation. And that's the position that the liberal, wealthy liberal refusal to invest right. in liberal media has put us in. Like, what do you well, want us to and, do? And, and refusal to invest in unions. Yes. And oh, yeah, yeah. There's a whole bunch of things that they that liberal money refuses to invest yes. in. And uh, it we, we've been talking about the housing market and the whole this whole redlining debate that's just cropped up in the last 48 hours. And it was amazing on Twitter to realize how many people have forgotten that the housing crisis was driven 
by investors. Yes. You know, bundling mortgages yes. and selling them as crap to each other. Mm -hmm. And well, you know, the housing market's never going to collapse. It's just we'll just bundle it again and sell it at a higher price or we'll bundle it again. And and finally, you don't know who owns your mortgage. Right. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> but somebody does and somebody's making money off of it. And then when everything collapses, who gets kicked out of their home? Who loses all their wealth? Who loses everything? Mm -hmm. It's not the banks. We're going to bail out the banks. I've still got on my bulletin board from 2009, yeah. the Newsweek cover. Remember? Uh -huh. The do. Newsweek cover says, we're all socialists now. Yep. And I saved that because I knew those motherfuckers were going to, socialism was going to become a bad word again mm -hmm. as soon as the banks were safe. Right. And so it's on my wall to remind me that it's perfectly okay to have socialism for the banks. That is fine. It's mm -hmm. fine with Newsweek. It's fine with McClatchy. It's fine with all the big corporations that uh, are happy to have a handout when a crisis hits their door. Yes. We got to move on. All right. Let's talk, first of all, about happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, darling. Because yeah. we met. We did. 12 years ago. We did. You and me. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. the 15th of February. Yes, we did. Melissa McEwen, who uh, used to blog at Shakespeare's Sister, mm -hmm. introduced us in Chicago. She did. At an Irish uh, bar. In Evanston. In a, in a meetup. Mm -hmm. And it was a blog meetup, and you and I met, and uh, we liked each other. We did. Well, we, knew, <laughs> we had known about each other for for a long yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Three years or so. Right. Yeah. Online. We've yeah. known each other. You, you, so. you, you ran salons and were a great writer. And I was a decent writer. Great and writer. Shows work. And, and I loved your writing. And there were funny moments in our blog comments about marry me drifty. I would make jokes about that. But I was unhappily married in Alabama and had three children. And uh, then that my status changed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was unhappily single living in Chicago and thought, yes. well, marriage is for other people. Yeah. Oh, I just live in my castle and look out my window at the lake. It's gray. It's always you gray. Were, you were a divorced guy. I was. He was unhappy. Yeah. And uh, I moved up to Illinois. And did. after this was after six months after we met at in Chicago at the blogger meetup that I flew up to to meet you pretty much and, yeah. and to say hello to Melissa. Uh, but I wanted to meet you. And, uh, but I didn't think that, you know, it was going to turn out like that. <laughs> and, uh, we continued to talk to one another as I went through my divorce and so forth. And, uh, then when I was living in Springfield, you came down for a visit. I did. And, and that was nice. And then you said that you I probably wasn't interested in dating, uh, cause people that just got divorced aren't interested in dating, but that when I was interested in dating, that there was going to be a line around my house and you wanted to be first in line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were jumping on that. That's mm -hmm. good. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, so, uh, I know yeah. a good thing when I see it. Yeah. So, uh, I thought about that and then that turned out to be okay. <laughs> and then, then we met up a few more times in Chicago and suddenly, and people started saying, you two crazy kids should have a podcast. You really yeah, you guys should be on the radio together because you talk, you're talking to each other is really lively. And, uh, and we, we, realized, thought, we both thought so. Right? And we realized, but there is no liberal radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should be. Right. But the only, I, and this is just a little bit of history. It, Chicago is the third largest media market in the United States or was at the time. I'm not sure if it still is, but I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And it had one progressive radio station that you could receive i could receive in my condo if i walked around with the radio over my head and a ball of aluminum foil over it and just sort of caught the signal just right that's how overmatched we were even in big blue chicago mm -hmm. and at the time chicago only had i think two locally produced shows everything else was syndicated from either new york or los angeles everything and that's that has not changed believe me that hasn't changed there are there, and and the local stuff was great, but there's no there was no room for anyone who wasn't in New York or L.A. or D.C. in the Chicago progressive radio market, which was just stunning to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was this thing called podcasting. Well, we can do it ourselves. A couple of microphones. We'll pick a name. We'll start talking about Barack Obama and the future of the Democratic Party. And 10 years later, here we are. Yeah. And uh... – 
just so you know, our uh, listenership, and we have between seven and 10,000 listeners a week, mm-hmm. uh, our listenership is very uh, geographically diverse. We have expats all over the world listening to us. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, but if you do a chart of where people are, the most listeners we have are in Chicago. Yes, absolutely. Now, that doesn't mean, and and that may be, t- I don't know how many that is. I haven't looked in a long time. Mm-hmm. It might be 10 listeners, you know, but, but the most, uh, geographically, the most listeners we have are in Chicago. So hi there. Hello. Hi there. Shout out to Chicago, City by the Bay or yeah. whatever. City, City with by the, the lake, right? City right. with the Seish. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now we're going to talk about uh, writing off day-to-day Trump coverage. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. And, and and the we, so we were talking last night. We went out for dinner last night to our spot. Our spot. We ran yeah. into like. 12 people we knew all of them. honestly it was just, weird well we we know lots of people and yeah. uh they were shocked that i was in a suit and tie like <laughs> man you clean up okay so I'm, I'm taking my wife out so just it was our off. anniversary dinner yes yeah. yes so and, but we we sat and we had a lovely dinner and we chatted about what we're going to talk about today because this the reason we are comfortable doing a podcast is this basically is our conversation every day anyway just with a microphone um and one of the things we wanted to talk about was the, the the tremendous psychic wounds that have been inflicted on our society over the last 20, 30 years. Um, mm-hmm. uh, racism is a longstanding one. So, and that just exists and the denial of it and the deflection of it and the, the feeding off of it that the right does that the, the fact that they gain energy from race hatred and that they built an entire movement on race hatred and fake Christianity is terrifying. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we have we had the Iraq war. We had eight years of of sedition and stonewalling of Barack Obama and then the election of Donald Trump. And there's a lot before that and there's a lot more to come. But it is this sense that we have been wounded many, many times, the collapse of the global economy um, and so forth. And we've never healed properly. Mm-hmm. We've never grieved. We've never had time to because we're always running to outrun the the next catastrophe or the last catastrophe, right? Just trying to patch something together, throw it together, just get us through the next thing. And at some, well, and this is why I warn everybody mm-hmm. that if we are blessed enough and work hard enough and are fortunate enough to take back the presidency in twenty twenty, mm-hmm. which we've got to do. Yes, we've got to do. We've got eighteen months uh-huh. to fix everything. To That's fix it. everything Trump broke, we have eighteen months. Right. If if that. Maybe 100 days. And, Maybe that's all we've got. And to learn from the last Democratic administration what not to do. Yep. A lot of lessons to be learned, not to take away or to bash Obama or his people. Uh, we've done plenty of that on this podcast, and you know, I've written about it. But to learn what not to do. You do not begin your presidency by courting the good opinion of David fucking Brooke. Right, right. You do not keep, you know, you don't Joe Biden everything and pretend the Republican Party is the party he grew up with 40 years ago, because it's not. You don't trust Mitch McConnell to do anything except screw you over. No, you need to go back to the beginning years of FDR. Yes, exactly. I welcome their hatred. Yes, he he said that. And plow. You have to plow through. And And that's, yeah. And talk about them in those terms. Talk about the Republican Party as domestic enemies. Mm-hmm. As, a, as an existential threat to this country. And then tell people in your next breath, it doesn't have to be this way. Right. It doesn't. That's the whole part of it. Yeah. The idea that this minority of hateful, bigoted morons are holding the rest of us hostage is insane. We outnumber mm-hmm. them. We're better than they are. We believe better things than they do. They're old. They're tired. They have nothing on their side but hate and rage and paranoia and an enormous amount of money. It's bankrolling their bullshit. That's all they have. We have everything else. And so the, what what we are doing is we have never healed correctly. And mm-hmm. we're, we're not going to heal for another 15 years. Just not. We're going to be sort of moving from wound to wound, crisis to crisis, patched up, meatball, psychic, political surgery. Patch it up and move on and patch it up and move on. But eventually – we have to actually take stock of where we are and heal ourselves. And one thing that we're trying to do is to write off the day-to-day coverage of Trump 
and honestly, the, the writing off of 60 million people who think he's amazing and wonderful. Not who want him as their dictator. Yes. And because it is, that keeps the feel, makes them feel safe. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think, and this is where I, I look at that sort of dumbfounded look you see on people in, on television, mm -hmm. in the media, when, they, when they're sort of confronted with the fact that there are no good Republicans. There just aren't. People who are struggling to find some explanation for what they're seeing that doesn't involve, holy shit, they're all terrible. They're mm -hmm. all fascist. They're all brainwashed. They're all lobotomized, and they're never, ever, ever coming back. Because that's a terrifying thought. So you see people looking for, you know, don't blame the voter. Don't, don't hate them. Don't call them mean things. Don't excite them. Don't make any sudden movements. Like you're dealing with a rabid animal. Except we tried all of that. It was called the Obama administration and none mm -hmm. of it worked. So what we're doing is not, we're acknowledging that there is something incredibly sad about being forced to sort of take 60 million people and push them on an ice flow and saying, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. You, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say. All you want to do is hurt me and everyone I love. All you want to do is put kids in cages. All you want to do is see me cry. You don't have a policy. You've got no coherent belief structure except hating me. And I can't deep, I can't be in that every day. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm simply going to I'm simply going to ignore this the way you would ignore weather reports when you're already hungered in the basement during a tornado. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, we can mm -hmm. hear the wind overhead. We can see right. the <laughs> being blown down. We don't need to be told every day, oh my God, this is really bad. If you are reporting in shock that Bill Barr is a traitor and a, a mob and a mob lawyer, then you've missed the whole point of the Trump administration, which was of course he is. Of course he is. They're all terrible. And they're all reflective of a party that is rotten right down to the grassroots. And that is, again, a terrifying thought to embrace. So, and that's, but that's what we have to face. That is true. That is a true fact. And we well, and I, I believe very specifically mm -hmm. that Bill Barr successfully undermined Mueller by depending on trust in institutions yes. from the media. Agreed. That, of course, it's the attorney general. We will respect him. He's going to give a press conference and say these things, and we will report it without judgment because it's the attorney general, and, of course, he's independent. Sure. And, you know— And, uh, he's, and of course, he's Mueller's boss, so he must be telling us what Mueller said sure. or what Mueller's uh, report is, right? Of, course, of course he must be. And the same, and your cra it's same crazy uncle, Liberty, who pitched an absolute fit because Barack Obama said a cop behaved stupidly once. Right. And, right. and and went berserk uh, for years, months and years, demanding show trials for treason when Bill Clinton talked to his friend Loretta Lynch on a tarmac yes, right, for five minutes. Right, right. Those same people could not then mentally turn around and say what Bill Barr is doing is fine. Cool. Fuck it. That, that mm -hmm. simply isn't possible. If you believe that, then you haven't been paying any attention at all to Republicans. They are brainwashed, lobotomized cartoons. They do not have any sort of agency in in the normal sense they'd simply do what sean hannity craps into their skull every day and if you continue to be surprised at every new outrage all you're going to do is is wear yourself out because yeah, i mean go look up mccabe on twitter <laughs> yeah that the flip out over the fact that the justice department doesn't have anything on mccabe and can't charge him with anything in a court of law without getting laughed out of court. Mm -hmm. And that McCabe is suing for wrongful termination and will win. Yeah. Uh, you see people on Twitter losing their shit over the injustice. And why is, I read one tweet, Drift Class, that'll tickle you. Why isn't Rudy Giuliani attorney general? I know. Why aren't the Democrats in prison? Why, why are all these guilty people yeah. in why prison? Why can't Donald Trump just put people in prison? Right. And they want it that way. They yeah. want it. And, I'm, and, and granted, Twitter isn't real world. Twitter is a no, focused version of the real world with in a dumpster. But it, it is reflective of the mindset of Republicans that we know. They yeah. don't understand why Donald Trump isn't just throwing their enemies in prison. Because clearly people like you and me are so dangerous and so awful and so uh, so part of the deep state that the only way to stop us is to screw law and order, screw timely, you know, screw screw uh, um, uh, due process. Right. Just 
drug deal like they do in China, just line them up against the wall and gun them down because clearly these people are are a threat to society. And and this is what your Republican neighbors think. This is what's okay with them. And and that's that's where we are freaked out because right now we on the left who've been warning this is coming for decades are watching everyone else who isn't on the right losing their mind because they're realizing very slowly and painfully that no one is flying the plane yeah that none of the institutions that we trusted that they trusted to stop the steady rise of fascism that that refused to even acknowledge the Republican Party was anything wrong with the Republican Party right up until Donald Trump took the oath of office and even after that, until it was too late. All these trusted institutions are are collapsed, are in dust, are, are, are have been destroyed by a steady, direct, carefully orchestrated master plan by the Republican Party to take over the government in the name of corporations. And that they have done so. This, this has been. Their, I don't think they ever planned to have Donald Trump as their president, but they certainly created a voter base that would inevitably be receptive to someone like Trump. They just thought that they'd get a Jeb Bush doing this shit or a Marco Rubio doing this shit. They didn't think Donald Trump. They never thought a better con man who spoke the language of of hating people more outgoingly would come in and take their party away from them. But that was their dumb. That was their dumb luck. The goal, however, if you look at the budget, the budget, the Trump budget is the Paul Ryan budget. There's no difference between the two. Absolutely. It's straight Republican orthodoxy. Yeah. Yep. So what are they? We get? should talk get, for a minute about that budget. We get massive. Uh, we, so what's the Republican orthodoxy? Uh, pack the courts so that 20 years from now, they'll still be able to you know, keep boot on the throat of the American public through the, through the courts, massive tax cuts, and gut every social program you can. That is the Republican orthodox. If they have a belief, that's it. And and the the Trump budget does all of that. It does. Um, and, and in space, they they're cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. The the Donald Trump who has declared bankruptcy six times, who has skated on I don't know how many billions of dollars of debt because he's a terrible businessman be, by taking advantage of the U.S.'s bankruptcy laws, is the same guy who's proposing getting rid of or severely rolling back loan forgiveness programs for college students. Right. Now, and he's also, he's, I'm sorry, doing this in an election year yeah. is, is, I got to admit it's ballsy, Sure. but it's it, all it is, is a commitment. You got to remember all it is, is a commitment to Republican orthodoxy. That's all he cares about. He is all running uh, for his base to his base period. That's it. Uh, and he does not care about, uh, this is this also gets me. He does not care about convincing independents to vote for him. Oh hell no. No. Oh, hell no. What he wants to do, what clearly they want to do, is make whoever the Democratic nominee is into Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Make them yeah. make them just bomb the the media and have right wing media all day long. Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. It's Benghazi right. now, as we said last week, Benghazi tomorrow, Benghazi forever. Whoever Democrats nominate is going to be a a uh, crack email looking, server email server leaks uh, whatever uh, Indian yep. usurping communist it doesn't matter yep. they're they're going to go into their grab bag of mad lib terms for hating libs throw them against the wall yep. and call that person everything under the sun and yep. all they want to do is depress enough turnout enough people who sit who get their news in five minute increments at the on their phone yeah i glance yep. at cnn going well they're all corrupt they're all bad i hear this bernie guy's a communist you know I don't like I don't like fascism, but you know, Democrat candidate X is clearly there's problems with them, and and appealing to that that native independent uh, yeah. voter cowardice of I oh, want I want a sides. white guy who's a strong man and will take care of yeah. everything, and so well, I'm going to go vote for Trump. Well, yeah. I don't want to take sides. I don't know yeah. who's right. I don't know who's wrong. I don't get my news. I'm stupid. I'm independent. I don't follow the news. I'm not political. I don't want to make up my mind. And I'll just stay home because it's all very confusing. well. And that's why you need to get where you can get minimum wage things on the on the ballot, and, that's, and get pot on the ballot, and get things on the ballot where somebody cannot say it makes no difference to me whether I vote or not. And that's why 
you need to burn their lifeboats. Because and burn the lifeboats. <laughs> both sides don't. Repeat both that. sides don't. Both <laughs> sides don't. It's on the back of our business cards. The first thing mm-hmm. you see when you ha- we hand you a business card is both sides. What does that mean? It means one side is evil and one side has all the normal warts and problems of a normal human institution. You need to pick one. If you cannot pick one, then you've already picked one. You've defaulted to team evil. You've told the world, I don't, I can't distinguish between rat poison and apple cider. And that is someone I can't have a conversation with because what they don't want to hear. There's a difference. They don't want facts. They want someone to tell them, preferably someone in a pastel tie on PBS every Friday, that both sides are bad, that both sides are wrong. That everyone's corrupt. If we only had a little more humility, you know that yeah. a little humility, <laughs> and, and you know if we if we'd only get back to reweaving society in a way that could defend capitalist values while at the same time, blah 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 blah. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I just, I just put my mouth sick. Just a little and bit. We're, my we're mouth up there. to we're up to news roundup time anyway, so let's get to that. Well, let's let's roll with it. Donald Trump now admits he sent Rudy Giuliani to Ukraine to find damaging information on his political opponents. Despite denying yeah. it during impeachment, yeah. Again, yeah. we're writing yeah. off Donald Trump as a crazy person who lies right. all the time. And yeah, we're not ignoring individual crimes and no. outrages. And we're not. Out that. We're not ignoring the fact that we now live in a fascist state. No, that that is a. Let's underscore yeah. that point. We, it, we, it's not coming. It's, it's here. here. We now live yeah. in a fascist country. Yeah. They haven't yet gone full full bore, but you know, as as um was pointed out in they thought they were free an essay of, of nazi germany nazi germany didn't go from beer hall pooch to concentration camps overnight right. there were incremental steps along the way a little more outrage a little more freedom taken away a little more government by surprise a little more judges being told that here are some new laws that you're going to have to enforce about race and everyone went along because it's just a temporary thing and i'm sure it won't last we're in that phase right mm-hmm. now we now have a fascist government in this country and a, a, a vocal opposition, a vocal, potent, viable, vibrant, enthusiastic opposition. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, however, in Kansas, oh. <laughs> a Republican blocked Medicaid expansion by insisting on attaching an abortion writer to the bill. Yeah. And so uh, Medicaid expansion in Kansas is on hold indefinitely until they work out the abortion rider issue. Because Jesus. Yeah. And because Republican. Mm-hmm. And because someone yeah. was able, a Republican woman in the state Senate in uh, Kansas was able to throw a wrench into the engine. And so those hospitals, right. everyone's saying, no, no, we're still going to get it through. We're still going to get it through. But those hospitals are standing there ready to close in Kansas. Yeah. In Kansas. And Kansas is already admitting sort of to itself that, that it has fa- it's a failed state. Right. The Brownback experiment. Because Brownback destroyed it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee State Senator Joey Hensley, a Republican, is worried that including tampons and other menstrual products in Tennessee's yearly sales tax holiday, a three-day weekend when residents can buy things tax-free. Not all year round. No. Not tax free all year round. For three days, you'll be able to buy tampons and pads tax free, but mm-hmm. that might lead to out of control tampon buying and hoarding. Hoarding and of tampons. Hoarding. Just just warehouses full of of tampons bought by tax cheats. Tax Ooh. avoidance people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you I, I just I just cannot emphasize how little Republicans understand about women. <laughs> At white all. men, white just, men, and, Republicans. You know, yeah. From from Rush Limbaugh insisting that birth control pills are sex pills. Yep. To um, just they just it's like there's a contest who can make a bigger ass of himself. And this week, Joey Joey Hensley wins that prize. Uh, yes. Sarah Sanders has said that Mike Bloomberg. Sarah Sanders, you might remember, worked for Donald Trump for a while. She stood behind yeah. the podium. She said a lot of lies. She she insulted the nation, embarrassed herself. Uh, said Mike Bloomberg will have serious problems with women and African Americans, and that his language is offensive and atrocious. Yeah, and she's now an expert on democratic politics as well, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trump will be the guest of honor at a fundraiser at the estate of billionaire Nelson Peltz, and it costs $580,600 per couple to attend. You could buy seven houses in Springfield. 
you could with that money or you could uh, fund the yeah. professional love podcast for the next 10 years <laughs> 10 years oh i think longer than that yeah, no absolutely but yeah <laughs> much, much much longer than that we make we make we do not make that in a year no this is uh uh five i don't know why they put the 600 on there though yeah. five hundred eighty thousand six hundred dollars i somebody toss pulled numbers out of a hat and said well, it's got to be six figures what's it going to be uh you want to read about despite blocking yeah but despite blocking barack obama from filing the supreme court vacancy near the end of his term merrick garland uh mitch mcconnell says he would fill a supreme court vacancy if it opened up before the november election with republicans mm -hmm. demonstrating for the billionth time for these slow children in the back of the room that republicans have no sense of honor or hypocrisy they just do shit and then turn around and do the opposite because the base will let them get away with it. Former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly called Trump's request for Ukraine to investigate his political rivals tantamount to an illegal order. Yeah. He he, he wins the uh, Maine Senator Prize for... The Susan Collins, yes. Susan Collins Prize, right? This Is week? there... I mean, I assume when you leave political office, you know, they take your keys and they take your swipe card. I, do they give you your balls back? Is that how it works? <laughs> No, because they suddenly <laughs> all these people suddenly find their voice at the moment when they can do the least good. Right. Uh, way too late. Yeah. Way too late. Uh, speaking of people who no one should ever have listened to, a lawyer, Michael Avenatti, has been found guilty on all counts of trying to extort up to twenty five million dollars from Nike. The White House plans to loot three point eight billion dollars from the Defense Department and our veterans. Yeah. To build Trump's stupid fucking wall along the U.S.-Mexico border for the second year in a row, Trump will steal from the Defense Department funds earmarked for counter drug activities and military construction and our veterans for his stupid fucking wall mm -hmm. that Mexico was going to pay for that now has to have gates open two months out of the year because of flooding mm -hmm. and that blows over into Mexico. Uh, on a regular basis and can be climbed over. Yes. There's just so much wrong here. Yes. And the, the number one wrong thing are the atavistic humans, let's say, who stand behind him and clap like seals when he says, build the wall, his stupid fucking rallies. Um, you might remember Hope Hicks and Sean Spicer and Reince Priebus. And I think the fourth one was Mickey Dolan's, but I don't remember exactly. It was <laughs> long, long ago. Apparently all three of them are returning to the White House uh, because they didn't get enough shame smeared in their hair when they were there. Hope Hicks will report to Jared Kushner and work on Trump's re-election campaign and other, quote, strategic matters, which I assume involves steam cleaning Donald Trump's pants while he's standing in them. Mm -hmm. uh, her title will be, quote, counselor to the president. Priebus and Spicer will join the president's commission on White House fellowships. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's corrupt. Yeah, well, it it means uh, a whole bunch of people have been in the White House Fellowship Program. They, it's young people who come and be an intern in the White House, and they many of them go on to great things. But uh, Donald Trump is I, working in Donald Trump's White House is not going to lead you to great things. We nope. all know what happens when you work for Donald Trump. You go to jail. Mm -hmm. The House Oversight Committee on Wednesday asked the Secret Service to provide a full accounting of its payments to President Trump's private company after the Washington Post revealed that the Secret Service had been charged as much as $650 per night for rooms at Trump properties. Yeah. Uh, and Eric is trying to make the excuse that that's for cleaning. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have no doubt that after all the hookers he runs through that place, it requires yeah, cleaning, well. but you know, that's uh that's neither here nor there and that certainly shouldn't be charged to the american taxpayer mm -hmm. um according to new unredacted emails the office of management and budget was fully aware of the pentagon's concerns about trump's hold on ukraine funding and attempt and they attempted to bury them the omb also appears to have lied to the government accountability office uh, about the circumstances surrounding the freeze once again the uh, outcome of impeachment is what what is is what it is, but the truth will just keep leaking out. You just can't help it. There's just no way to stop it. And every time one of these comes up, we have to make sure it rises to our uh, the top of our voice. We right. remind the all level the people, of attention. Just, right. Crazy Uncle Liberty needs to be reminded over and over again: guilty as fuck, and you are too. Senate Republicans blocked an effort by Democrats to unanimously pass three election security-related bills. 
The bills required campaigns to alert the FBI and Federal Election Commission about foreign offers of assistance, banned voting machines from being connected to the Internet, and provided funding for the Election Assistance Commission. They're cutting a hole in the fence to make sure that they get help cheating. Uh, who knows who's going to help them this time? Um, probably everybody. Everybody who's got uh, got their hooks into, everybody who Donald Trump's got an IOU out to is going to be coming swarming through the fence helping him cheat to win. And uh, last but not least, more than 100 U.S. service uh, members have been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries now following the January 8th Iranian missile attack in Iraq. Trump is still insisting they're just headaches. This is the week that Bill Barr just granted Donald Trump um, extraordinary powers. This is the week that uh, he reached into, he violated every uh, public policy, every uh, uh, Department of Justice policy by reviewing and, and insisting on lowering the sentence of one person. There is there is a change in the in the atmosphere, though, that I'm sensing of people pretending to distance themselves from Trump yeah. in order to provide cover for them. That wasn't happening before impeachment. No. It was just, well, yes, yes, dear leader, yes, dear leader. The Senate voted 55 to 45 on a war powers resolution. And yeah. there were eight Republicans, including Susan Collins, who voted against Trump. Now that it, now that he'll just veto it and it won't make any difference. Right. right. It's that was uh, we talked a little bit about Rodney Davis over dinner. Yeah. Which, which yeah. made me again a little bit sick in my mouth, but we did it anyway. Yeah. Um, about how he voted for this this bipartisan bill. Yeah. This uh, this low priority bipartisan bill. That well, would go... it's a high priority, but it's but to him, I mean, I don't know what oh, it yeah. meant to him, but he bragged about it, yeah. which is they are. Uh, The House did pass a bipartisan bill to undo the very unfair restrictions on the Postal Service. Right. And that's great news. I am so glad that legislation passed the House. That's I'm but it is the 401st piece of legislation that is now sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk. That that will die under Mitch McConnell's desk. Right. Right. And and I there's an awful lot of I have a very strong feeling. I don't have any leaks inside the beltway. I'm sorry. I just don't. I live in a cornfield, so sue me. But I have a very strong intuition, having worked at large institutions before and sort of understanding how this works, that there are certain votes that are being given as consolation prizes to members mm-hmm. in tight districts. Because uh, uh, our district, um, the Betsy Dirksen uh, uh run this year, is an Emily's List marquee race. Right. Red to it blue, a- flippable seat. This right. is a I, we're sitting smack in the middle of a national right rate. It's one's getting a lot of national headlines, and you're welcome. So I, you know, I'm one of three people phone banking for him. So <laughs> it must be important, right? Um, but they're they're giving away consolation votes. So Rodney Davis can say, I, I I worked so hard on bipartisan legislation, and I'm so proud of it, knowing that it will die in the Senate. Um, they the, they can pass War Powers Act. So Susan Collins can say. I held him accountable for this thing that then he vetoed and we just forgot about it. And I fell back asleep. Just, it gives them something to go home with well, during an Bill election. Barr going on ABC, not Fox, so that right. Fox could show a clip of ABC, right. which legitimizes everything. Sure. You know, sure. it's not a Sean Hannity interview. It's an ABC, John Carl, you know, that makes it real. And, you know, admitting their own complicity. Uh, he goes on ABC to do this. Uh, to to pretend no one believes him, but to pretend that he has distance from Donald Trump's tweets. Uh, it's absurd, but it is a sea change. It is an atmospheric change that people are feeling the need to pretend to distance themselves from him. Well, uh, that to it, me is interesting. I, and, and this is, um, there, there's a Simpsons bit where um, the lawyer Lionel Hutz takes a business card about no money down, no, uh, and and says, "Oh, this is all wrong," and like draws a comma on it because, and it, the real meaning is no money down. Um, <laughs> and and I, my interpretation of what Bill Barr did was telling Donald Trump in public, "I already have this shit covered. You're mm-hmm. just making it harder for me to cover your criminality by blabbing about it in public." So you're, you kind you're of saying out, the quiet parts out loud. Yeah. yeah. So just shut up, and I'll cover you. I'm a corrupt mob thug i am your roy cohen that's what you put me in charge of this please since you don't listen to my memos and you don't do anything but watch cable news and listen to twitter please i'm telling you through the the medium you will understand 
stop saying the loud, the quiet part loud, and I will take care of all of your crimes. They'll all be covered up. Flynn will get off, and and you'll pardon them all anyway. Once you know, once you're in a position to do that. But please know that I got your back. You don't need to remind me and make me look stupid in front of all the of all the people I have to deal with. Because you can go off and just be an asshole, and people will cheer you. I actually have to eat lunch in various places around the city. And right. my food now tastes like urine already. So <laughs> how about you give me a little little credit for being a really good criminal um, and being good yeah, at covering Yeah, that's it. Eyes. Give me credit for being a good enough criminal that you don't have to help me on Twitter. Right, right. right. Uh, one thing we did forget to mention. Yeah. Uh, the theological wisdom of Sean Hannity. Oh, Lord. I wrote yeah. about that today. Yeah, so uh, go, go over to Crooks and Liars. You'll see it says theologian Sean Hannity. <laughs> And, yeah. and I, let me add to that, actually, because I brought up the book that we read in adult Sunday school. Yes, yes indeed. called Half Truths. All this stuff that people think is in the Bible or think is biblical truth. This is exactly the trap Sean Hannity tried to make his listeners fall into, which is Bible, 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 and then something from a right wing motivational poster. Yes. You know, yes. give a man a fish and he f- eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Right. That's not in the Bible. No. John Hannity, John Hannity's theology, short, the short version is, feed yourself, you lazy fucks. And <laughs> it's in the Bible. Jesus said that. Jesus, no. No distribution it, of wealth. It's all mine. And, and I, my only comment was, not since Otto from A Fish Called Wanda, has anyone gotten the core tenet of a philosophy or theology so completely wrong and backwards as Sean Hannity did in such a short period of time yeah, uh, and claimed to be a Christian claims to know what he's talking about. And, and he again, does know what he's talking about up to the point where he starts talking about wealth. That's the amazing thing. Well, yeah. He went, he went to catechism. He gets it. He knows his Bible a little bit, yeah. but uh, then he just morphs right into the greed, white supremacy dictums that white evangelical Christians, Republicans fall into of it makes me feel good to say it. So it must be from Jesus Christ and just blonde case, baby Jesus Christ. In case you're not part of the, uh, in case you're not hip to the Bible, which is just fine. We have lots of atheists. We love our atheist listeners. Oh yeah. Um, the feeding of the multitude is like <laughs> one of the core miracles of Christianity. It's in all four <laughs> gospels, which is rare. Not all of them are, but this one is. And it's been taught in Sunday schools for the last, I don't know, 2,000 years or so. Our so, atheist listeners are very hip to that. They know yes. their Bible pretty well. Yeah. Yes, so, they do. all right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website at Internet Kitty, sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitties are Ron and Joe. Joe is Ron's mommy. Aww. And we saved them for today because the photo of them shows them making a heart. They're snuggling in the shape of a heart for Valentine's Day. Uh, Their owner writes, Joe the tabby is the mom and Ron the orange boy is her son. I rescued them from Universal Studios in Orlando where I worked as an actor. I worked as conductor of the Hogwarts Express and an Ollivander's wand keeper. Joe was named for Joe J.K. Rowling and her two kittens we named Ron and Harry. Harry got adopted, but since Joe and Ron were inseparable, mother and son now live with me. Isn't that sweet? That is so sweet. And, of course, Ron and Joe only eat freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Yeah. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Ron and Joe making a heart at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your Internet Kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, and it's really cold here, so we're all drinking hot coffee over here in Springfield, uh, buy buy us a coffee. 
This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information, all the information you need is there at proleftpod.com. I want to do a special thank you to a listener who sent us a donation in the form of a check and included a smaller check for Junior Dude to thank him for his campaign knocking door to door. Uh, that was very kind of you. And we did deposit that in Junior Dude's checking account. And he wanted me to say a sincere thanks for that uh, donation. Thank you very, very much for that. That was very kind. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, actually, the Internet Kitties have quit the podcast. Uh, yeah, that, now they're making $75 an hour canvassing for the Cats for Bloomberg campaign. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.